Hi there, I'm Carrie Kira Star Ellis, author of the 21st Century Superhuman Books series. So let's bring Gerald on and see what he has to say. Hey Gerald, how are you today? Hi, oh, I'm wonderful. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm good. I think, yeah, we want to talk about your journey today because you're just an amazing being and you've grown into a shaman, a healer. You're doing amazing things. I want to go way back to the beginning because, well, not the very beginning, but I know <laughs> when we met you in person, you had just been traveling for about four years at that time and kind of soul searching, right? And sort of figuring out what you wanted to do with life. And and I think everybody, I think a lot of people end up going through that search for personal freedom. So I'd love to hear you share kind of about how that came about for you and what that journey took you on. Oh, it's uh, it's been a wonderful journey. It's, uh, I didn't realize I was on a journey until like the last few years, really. And uh, I thought I was on a journey to see, you know, different places and meet new people. But my journey was actually within. I just wow. Always the, that's always the ticket, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, places are wonderful to go see. There's so much to see in the world. It's such a beautiful place. But within is a far more beautiful place. Wow. Those are precious words. So, yeah, because I was kind of forced into my journey um, and uh, it just uh, kind of just happened. The universe just kind of guided me everywhere I was going. And um, it's uh, the people I've met on the road have been just absolutely wonderful. The, I've met so many younger people that are just so full of life. Their eyes are so bright. And I've learned so much from them and uh, learning uh, about minimalistic. That's yes, beautiful. That's kind of my experience too. So many young people who are so awake, like in all cultures, it's not even, not even one culture, but it's really everywhere. These really awake young people. And um, yeah, and minimalistic, I love that word, living simply, simple living without so much attachment to things and stuff and time constraints and all of that. Yeah, because uh, what I've discovered on my journey is the only thing we're supposed to be attached to is love. We're not supposed to be attached to people, possessions, just love. Beautiful. We're attached to that and all the others just come. My, uh, I used to look at my life as a tragic uh, traumatic childhood past and it's um uh but now my past has given me the strength i have today and i beautiful wow yeah i don't look at it as traumatic at all it just um i embrace it um so much forgiveness inside love for myself inside being gentle on myself and it's just really opened my heart up. Beautiful. So what kind of booted you out of where you were and put you on your journey on the road? <laughs> uh, a relationship. Uh, and it basically left me with nothing but a vehicle and you know some possessions, a few possessions. And I just stored them away at a friend's place and um, I was driving away and it, uh, from that situation, which was a blessing. And I realized here I am 57 years old with nothing, a few dollars in my pocket. Yeah. And, and things just fell into place. Wow. So you left the good old USA and you started eventually started driving around south of the border, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that really wasn't even on the radar. It just kind of happened. It's wow. like that old proverbial, I took a wrong turn, uh, left turn in Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. And yeah, I mean, and then it's I went into the Baja first. And it's just uh, totally stepping into my fears. 
not speaking the language, not really knowing where I was going and just going. And it just uh, opened up, opened me up so much. I just came down to embrace the culture, the people. The people are so wonderful. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Totally. Kind, loving, family-oriented. They'll treat you like family. Very precious. Yeah, and it really opened my heart up to see the world differently. And um, they're so giving in Mexico and just the very proud people and so full of love. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was a few years ago. Actually, tomorrow will be actually two years wow. crossing the border. So I know that when we met, um, which was, I don't know, you think was it two years ago when we met or a little, little less than two years ago? Maybe. Wow. Yeah, it was like two years ago when we yeah. not met in person, but met. Yeah. And you were involved in the MKP project, the Mankind project, and you met my husband, Madik, through that. And what do you think MKP did for you? I know it's been really transformative for him. Um, it's um, really opened up so many doors. Um, was that kind of an activation for you? Yeah, because how I got involved with it was I kept doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, it didn't happen. <laughs> so it was like, all right, I have to change. Something has to change. So I reached because I feared men. Uh, I actually feared men, which a lot of men do. Right. And so I reached out to a men's circle. And next thing you know, six weeks later, I went through the MKP uh, initiation weekend. And it totally changed my life. Wow. You know, it's like, why did I wait so long? <laughs> How beautiful. Yeah, and I get to, I've got to meet such wonderful people through there, Mary, for one, and develop some really close bonding relationships with men. Yeah. And then uh, that's really helped me grow. I, you've touched on some things that I think we all, we have activation points in our lives. And um, relationships, a lot of times, are activation point endings or beginnings. You know, they can, activate us to make us have to look deeper, dig deeper, you know, discover more in ourselves. And then groups like the men's circles are also, I think those are activation points. And then once we get activated, then we start helping activate others. But those activations also make us dig deeper in our journey. They make us seek, you know, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What am I doing? And, you know, I think each of us goes through, it's like the dark night of the soul almost, where we're kind of asking ourselves, why am I here? What am I doing? What's my purpose? <laughs> I remember hearing that from you quite a bit <laughs> when we in the early days when we first met. And how was that seeking for you? Tell us about that a little bit. Oh, well, um, looking within, definitely looking at those buried wounds that are just so compressed down. And uh, I led a life of numbness, actually. I didn't feel. You know, men are taught that at an early age. But through this, the Mankind Project, and then looking within, I was able to bring those old wounds up and stand in the fire and look at them. And that's what I was talking about earlier is that is the beautiful journey. As painful as it was, it the outcome, the other side of it, what I see now is just magnificent. Wow. It's, you know, it's like this journey, especially the last two years, the best way I can describe it is I'm like a volcano erupting. Wow. And it's given me a solid foundation to stand on. Nice. And I've really stepped into my purpose and I found my purpose by looking within because it's within all of us. Right. I, that's really touching my heart, too, because I, too, have had those awarenesses where I look back at things that I considered painful when they were happening in life. But then they end up we realize that everything is really 
coming, it's really inside of us. It's inside of us, the opportunity to choose how we relate to situations. And as we mature and we grow, it's, we change all those circumstances and all that energy by becoming more loving inside in relationship to those situations, seeing what we're supposed to see in ourselves. And um, yeah, I can really relate to that. Yeah, because um, once we really look at it, what did that situation teach me? Right. Was it to speak my voice? Was it to stand up for myself? Whatever that lesson was, because each situation gives us an opportunity to learn a lesson in life. Because that's why we're here is to learn a lesson. And that's yes. how we advance and expand and uh, our light get brighter. Our, we vibrate higher. Yes. And in turn, that's given me, uh, I look at my past now and I embrace it so much that it's um, allowing me to help guide others to touch down deep within them. Uh, you Beautiful. mentioned, you know, shaman, healer. I look at myself more as a guide. Uh-huh. Nice. And I just, I love talking to people, meeting people. And through the, the, I do hypnosis, quantum healing hypnosis. And through that, it allows me to hear people's stories, their life story. And I absolutely love hearing what other people's journeys have been. Right. And what they've gone through. And then uh, through the sessions, like, where are they going to go? <laughs> you know, because it's a past life regression. So it's just absolutely fascinating. So it's really, I've really found my purpose. And nice. that's just helping others, guiding others to heal. You spent a while helping at a center that had transformative events for people. And how is that for you? Oh, uh, that was a beautiful growth experience there, too. That, um, really got me in touch with my heart and uh it really opened it up because there's different cultured people there so i really got to meet people from around the world yeah and um it really expanded um my gifts of uh energy how i feel people's energy moving energy and so it, it's just really gave me a lot more insight and allowed me to embrace the powers I actually have. You've gotten heightened sensitivities and you can feel people, you can feel energy. Um, share with us a little bit about how that has developed for you, what the what that process was. It's something that I've actually had all my life, but I didn't know it. And I thought I was just this sensitive, wimpy little kid. You know, and um, but through this uh, retreat that I was at, I ended up there for three months. I actually feel people's energy in me. And when I do energetic healings, I can feel in my body where the energy is trapped in theirs. Like if wow. it's in their throat, my throat will start getting tight. So I know, all right, it's trapped there. And then I can help move it. But then it's up to them to release it. You know, I... I can do part of it but it's up to them to do the other part and um but i can feel that feel if i tune in i can feel your energy walking down the street i feel people's energy walking by and i can tell what kind of day they're having wow yeah I, what i do is uh we'll send out a blessing like you say a healing thought i really don't spend my energy on people that don't ask for it Right. Um, because it gets very overwhelming and tiring and it takes a lot of my energy away. And right. so, you know, I just basically if somebody wants a healing, I'll sit there and ask permission and then I'll really focus in on them. But like just walking by people walking by, if I send somebody that's really kind of off, I sit there and just send out love to them. Right. Because, again, yeah. love's the answer to everything. It is. Um, yeah. Do you feel like you've ever been in a search for personal freedom, freedom of the spirit, freedom of to be who you are fully? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what happened was I did a ceremony called Montagna. And uh, that really gave me a lot of insight. And then I've had a few 
I've actually been hypnotized through the quantum healing hypnosis a few times. And that both sessions kind of gave me the same information, but just more in detail. And then my astrological chart and my numerology chart, putting all that together, it really gave me an insight of who I actually am as an energy being. Nice. And it's uh, quite fascinating. It's uh, a bit um, overwhelming to embrace. Well, I think we are all divine beings. We're all, we all really have superpowers. That's what 21st century superhuman is about. We have powers that have been, I, don't, I shouldn't even call them powers, abilities. Let's call them abilities, mm -hmm. sensitivities, awarenesses that have been kind of suppressed by us living in a culture that's really built around a lot of left brain stuff, around a lot of you have to, you have to, you have to. And so it's kind of like a recovery of that self to be able to allow ourselves to flow and really experience those those heightened sensitivities. And, um, and I think we are really big beings. We are really awesome, amazing. You know, I think part of the, our evolutionary process, our awakening process, our, what is being called the ascension process is about us learning to capacitate fully who we are. Cause like part of us isn't even there with us for a while until we begin reclaiming it. And then once we do, we change our habits, we change our bodies, we change what we do every day um, so that we can capacitate those energies and be, I mean, you're a pretty technical guy and I know you know what capacitors are. Um, so I know that you've made life changes to help you capacitate your knowledge of yourself, your abilities, your sensitivities. What have you done, um, you know, as far as lifestyle that has helped you become a better um, capacitor for those things? Um, well, you're absolutely right on all of that. I, my lifestyle changes, I didn't set out to do them. They organically happened. My diet changed. Uh, I stopped eating meat. I do eat seafood, but fruits and vegetables. So I, and I stay away from anything processed as Very much good. as possible. Very and good. then um, also meditation, yoga, stretching. Um, and through all of this journey, exercise, uh, through all this journey and through the hypnosis, I discovered the power of the mind. And the words we choose to use in everyday life really affect us. And to really look at everything in a positive manner in, you know, like the word try, the world is trying so hard and the universe hears us trying. And it's like, don't try. The universe hears that. It's like, oh, they want to try. Let them try. They yeah. like trying. Oh, oh very good. Them. And as Yoda says, there is no try. It is do or do not, right? Right. That's beautiful, right. though. I love that. The universe says, okay, go ahead and let them try. Yeah. And so um, trying right. is only trying. It's not being, entering a state of being. Right. Uh, enter that state of being, the state of doing. The universe, oh, I'm going to meditate every morning. Oh, he's going to meditate every morning. Okay, let's help him. Let's give him some you know, little flash feeds on Facebook or whatever on different meditations to use because the, there's little messages come all the time. And uh, I get so many downloads and messages early in the morning, uh, wow. just before light. Nice. And, um, and I've learned to, when they come, to hold on to them and follow through with it. Very our, good. Yeah, our natural, inst we have natural instincts. Um, and if we follow those, that's our higher self, our guides talking to us. Yes. And we follow those, our natural instincts become stronger and stronger. We're connected to the higher source all the time. We're all interconnected. The more yes. we follow our instincts, the more connected we get and the higher our vibration becomes. Yes. What does that mean to you when you say the higher our vibration comes? 
because we talk uh, about dimensional living, you know, 3D is kind of like this old solid world that we're so used to. And then we kind of have the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, um, but, but higher vibrational living, um, higher frequency. How do you, how do you explain all of that? Um, so the higher vibration in order to get to 4D or 5D, we have to be lighter. We have to vibrate at a higher level. Oh, beautiful. And so if we raise our vibration a positive attitude, be joyous, be loving, be happy, that raises our vibration. If we're sitting there uh, smoking dope all day and drinking all day or always depressed, well, that's a very low vibration. And so we need to get out of those and start loving ourselves, loving others, loving nature, getting out in nature. One thing that happened to me, well, a few years ago, and it just happened, I stopped wearing shoes. I don't wear shoes. And I'm still, I'm grounded. I connect with nature all day long. And so that was a huge uh, thing for me to get connected and raise my vibration is just being grounded and connecting with nature. Because there's an electricity that flows through us. There's a, a life circuitry that we're part of when we do that. And I think that amplifies and raises our, our vibration, makes us more high frequency and have more life force, have more vitality. I mean, I think a lot of people, how often do they ever walk around without their shoes on, on the bare ground? Yeah. And um, connect with nature, get out in the sunshine, get out in the breeze, uh, look at trees, sit and just look at a tree for 10 minutes. And what do you see? Think of that creation. It's like, did you create it? Somebody created that tree. Right. And how fascinating that is. We're only limited by our own belief system. There's a quote, in the vault of our minds are the chains that bind us, bound us, but also wow. the keys that sets us free. Ah, in the vault of our mind are the chains that bound us, but also the keys that sets us free. Ah. That is really, really beautiful. Very nice. And it's true. Yes, the quantum healing hypnosis. And yes, it's the Dolores Cannon. And I just, things started popping up about her. And so I started investigating and it just resonated so much with me. Like right now I have energy throwing through my, flowing through my body. It's like she's right here. Wow. And, um, she's amazing. She is oh, really yeah. She was a powerful lady, very, yes. really brought through some great things. Wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, like 19 books. Her books are fascinating. Yeah. And For those who don't know, we should just say really quickly, Dolores Cannon was kind of a regular hypnotherapist, helping people stop smoking and all that kind of thing. And then and kind of a regular person. And But her people started coming back from their journeys and telling her about other planets and other lifetimes. And she said, well, let's just let this go where it takes us. And instead of shutting it down, like maybe a more normal therapist might. And so she ended up developing this whole quantum uh, hypnosis healing system, which I think is just fabulous. And what did you, did you say she wrote about 13 books? I know she wrote a lot. About of 19 books. 19 books. And, and then her daughter, Julia, um, has so much information still that more books are going to come out through wow. all, because she did thousands of hypnosis. And, and then uh, she's trained people all over the world in her system, which is really fabulous. I mean, her, yeah, I mean, everything I've ever read by her is just fascinating, fascinating. And listening to videos, Dolores Cannon on YouTube and that kind of thing. But anyway, go ahead. You got drawn to her work. and Yeah, I was just pulled in. It resonated. And all of a sudden, I signed up for the course. I got certified. And I'm a level two certified practitioner now. And um, the work is absolutely fascinating. I'm just so drawn into it. Again, I get to how it works. Basically, it starts out with an interview with the person. And I get to learn about their life story. And it's all confidential. And um, then we do the hypnosis. Well, prior to that, the person's going to write down questions they may have. And it could be, why was I abused as a child? 
should I be in this relationship that I'm in now? Um, oh, the number one question that everybody asks, almost everybody is, what's my purpose? <laughs> Why am I here? Really? Uh -huh. and, and the answer is always the same. You wow. know the answer? What? We're here to help each other. Oh, that's so sweet. But how we help each other, that's where everything kind of branches off. This is all <laughs> different great. ways. Great. I love and, that. And when we say help each other, everything has consciousness. The earth has consciousness. So there's people to conserve the earth, working on the oceans, the land. So there's all, that's all helping consciousness. And um, so what happens then? The person goes under, and it's called past life regression. Not everybody, like you say, goes to past lives. Like uh, my first time going under, I actually went through a wormhole to another planet because my soul needed to be healed. Wow. And so Beautiful. they healed my soul. So, I mean, so we, I never, like, they go under. It's like, where are we going today? <laughs> you know, it's just, and I just, uh, all I do is ask questions to find out what the person is feeling, seeing, um, hearing and so i just have them describe it to me and then uh we connect with their higher self in the higher self i ask the questions to so it's basically you answering your own questions but it's your higher self right and then with this also healing it, uh, can be done uh not just uh, uh mental healing but physical healings. She's got countless cases of stage four cancer, heart problems, people in wheelchairs, um, all being healed through this because the power of the mind. Uh, what she discovered is we should never be sick and we should never have aches and pains. And if we are, we do, then we caused it. And so if we caused it, that means we also have the power to heal it. And that's where I've really been working on discovering more and more. And what message has been coming to me is the power of the mind, discovering right. the power of the mind. And I've been getting so many downloads on that. And um, so our mind, we have the ability to heal our lives. We just have to, when the, we were born, the veil dropped, we forgot everything. So now it's up time for us to remember. And it's coming. And it's going to be coming yeah. very soon because the earth's vibration is rising. Right. And so many are in this wake up process of this awareness. We're realizing we're in a quantum world. We're realizing that our thoughts create. We're realizing that we can direct that creation. And we're just babies at it, you know, because it's been suppressed or ignored for so long or forgotten. And here we are remembering. Gerald, what is your... Um, Tell me the name of your web, the innermirror.com. I just think what you're doing is fascinating. And um, in a way, you know, I have my path and I have my purpose <laughs> and I have my things that I'm doing. I'd love to do what you're doing. It just really sounds fascinating and fun. And I have been, I've received several um, hypnotherapy sessions of the Dolores Cannon sort and slightly other variations. And they've been wonderful and giving me great insights on my life. So obviously when we talk about hypnosis, we think, oh, you know, well, I'm gonna be out and I'm not gonna remember anything. Do people remember things when they come out of the sessions? Yeah, because the earth's vibration is rising, people's uh, energy is vibrating higher. Um, back when Dolores was doing it, people were like almost under anesthesia. They don't, didn't really remember. And so we actually record just the hypnosis part. So that way the person has everything. Um, but now, in, at the end of Dolores's time, uh, she started realizing people were like, wow, are they under? You know, because I'll have somebody, I'm like, I'm wondering if they're really under or not. Right. And they're, they're talking like, to you, right? Well, they're their talking. arms are moving. And well, yeah, they talk during it. Even Dolores' time, they talk. Right. But, they're actually moving around. They're not just laying still. And um, then I've had some where they come out and I, I always ask, well, how long do you think you're under? Oh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. How about two hours? Right. You know? And uh, but then some are pretty much know everything that was said.
They come out and they remember pretty much everything, but they still get the recording. It's extremely important to follow through and listen to the recording because there's information. And this keeps working even after the session. Like when one sleeps, when one sleeps, they that's when a lot of downloads really come. And um, so it's uh, it really important to listen to those recordings and get the information. And uh, it's amazing the healings that can be done, the insights on past uh, buried emotions, whatever, because the higher self takes the person to wherever it is they need to go for what's going on in their life at the time. How I don't decide it. They do. So, yeah, people are very aware, you know, in most cases of, you know, uh, what's going on during the hypnosis. Are there any ways that you set things in motion to help them access their own healing or um, access, yeah, resolution of old things? Or does that just part of the process? It just kind of is natural. Yeah, it's uh, actually part of the process because what it is, this hypnosis, most hypnosis, we have our brains in four states. Right now we're in uh, beta. Right. You know, we're alert. And then alpha, which that's what most hypnosis is in the alpha state. We right. close our eyes, even driving, you can be in alpha. Right. And then watching TV, within 60 seconds, you go into alpha. That's why the commercials are there, brainwashing. And um, then. Ah, isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah, they know all about it. They bypass the frontal lobe of the brain where our logic is and just, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, so quantum healing hypnosis goes into the theta state, which theta state is just before sleep and just after you wake up. And then, of course, sleep is delta. So we get into that theta state. And when the person goes under, I don't tell them where to go. They go automatically. Their higher self at that point has taken over and guides them to what they need to see or where to go. I know the time I've known you, you've really been searching, learning, digging deeper, growing, digging deeper, growing, <laughs> digging deeper. And, um, you know, and, and because of the digging, you started coming up with your own solutions, your own truth, your own light. You began shining it and, uh, it's been really beautiful to watch. And uh, how has that been? How's that journey been for you? You know? Uh, getting... Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, because you guys really got to see a lot of my expansion. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not the same person. You know, for me, it's, um, it's exciting now to dig deep. I have no fear of digging deep and going deeper. It's something that will probably never stop. That's I want to see that knowledge. I want to be more open. I want my heart to open up even more. And mm. through this, it's given me purpose in life. It's given right. me reason to live. I mean, it, I, I'm actually thriving. I'm looking forward to the next day, the next moment. And um, I look forward to when clients come. And it's like, oh, what's this person going to see? How is this person going to be helped? And so it's just... Uh, you know, having purpose in life, find, finding one's mission, there's no more work. It's just you're doing your passion. And so I'm living my passion in a warm climate. <laughs> so everything that we do is just part of the journey of the process of waking up, of becoming who we are, of remembering the divine aspects of ourselves, the abilities within ourselves to create, to co-create, and to live as a creative being because much of our culture is sort of designed around keeping us in kind of a little narrow band. You know, it's safe, it's secure, we get up every day, we go to our job or go to our school and take care of kids or family, whatever else we need to do. And then doesn't leave a whole lot of extra time for that creative uh, self to come forward. And I think I mean, honestly, I think, especially once people start waking up a little bit, um, and especially, yeah, that's it. As people start waking up, it can be a little bit of a of a pressure, you know, like, wow, I'm doing this every day, but there's part of me that wants to bubble up and express itself. 
And how do you think people can break beyond that? Whatever, you are right, we're here to create. And yeah. creation can become in many, many different forms. Yes. Art, music, uh, writing, poetry. Uh, just find something that you're passionate about. Ask, ask oneself and get, from the heart space, what does one like to do? And then do that. And uh, setting time for oneself. The you know, people work in the nine to five jobs and family. You know, there's commitment there, but also they need to have time for themselves. And we do need to create. And like yeah. I creating a way to help people. It doesn't nice. come in a form of artwork or if there's writing involved and such, but so that's creation. Everything we're here to create the universe is un, is limitless. There's no yes. box that we need to be in. And it's yeah. forever expanding. And so are we. So we can grasp on to whatever you want, ask for it. Yes. We have to ask. Yeah. If we don't ask, they won't, they can't interfere. <laughs> That's but if right. we ask, boy, they're gonna jump right in and help us all they can. That's they're beautiful. Put opportunities in front of us. So it's just whatever from the heart space, just create. And it's do it for you, nobody else. Well, can I throw out something that was a big turning point for me? In my journey, I, I was very lonely. Mm -hmm. So this is for the lonely people. Yeah. And I read something on the internet someplace, and it pissed me off. It said, you're only lonely if, uh, you're only lonely if you don't like the person you're alone with. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was like, ouch, that made me so angry. Uh -huh. That that was a big turning point for me. Because that really, now I love being alone. Nice. I absolutely <laughs> love it. I get my batteries recharged. I, I, I'll i do some little writings and I just, uh, I work on my website, just whatever. But I like socializing too. Yes, but I think it's really important for people to take time in their own space, allow time every day, even if it's 15 minutes, just to be by oneself and be comfortable with it. Beautiful. What about people who are afraid? What would you tell them? People ah. who are fearing what might happen or is everything going to be okay or am I going to have enough or, you know, I think we're really, 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 fear is a really big energy in our culture, in our society. I know in the society that I come from, which is basically my background is the United States, mm -hmm. um, but pretty much I think, you know, I hear from people that are out in my audience, I hear, you know, fear is... Um, how do we go from fear to creator? You know, I mean, that's a big leap to let go of fear, to find a way outside of fear and not have everything in life be driven by it and begin accessing our creator aspect. I'm from the States also, and the, uh, it's very fear driven. One thing I could say is turn the TV off, turn the radio off. Yeah. <laughs> that right there, you're, it, it's life changing. After 30 days, you're going to be blown away how you feel. Well, and I'll even add into that, you know, even I've really been into the alternative news the last couple of years, and I'm even starting to just shut down those channels. Why do I want to keep sending that stuff through my mind? Because then all we're doing is reliving something that might have already happened. Let's create something new. And in order to do that, we have to center in breathing into our heart, into the knowing that these molecules of creation are going to move as we put our mind and our heart and our energy upon them. I have no idea what's going on in the world. I haven't a clue. That's I don't great. To, I mean, I'll listen to like some YouTube music stuff, vibration stuff, but I, I'm totally oblivious. And all I can do, I don't worry about the world. Right. I, as a human being, as a man, am not going to change the whole world. I can, right. my, can change my universe. When I change my universe, I'm changing the world. That's a lot of weight for carry for people to carry. Yes. The weight of the world on their shoulders. Yes. Work on your own universe. You do that, your life 
uh, you vibrate higher, your light shines brighter, and affects the person next to you. Yes. Now you're changing the world. And fear is basically all it is is the unknown. It's the future. And the future doesn't exist. So right now we're writing our life. It's a, but it's not written. We're writing it as we go. So we have a choice. We have free will. That's right. How do you want your life to be? And write it that way. Beautiful. If, you have, if there's toxic people in the, your life, let them go. Yes. If you're around somebody and after the conversation, you just feel totally drained, put them to a distance. You don't have to like never see them again. Distance them. I only have a few people that I hold close. You and Mary, there's two of them. <laughs> and these are people, after I get done speaking with them, my energy is raised. Yes. I feel good. I feel like I can take over the world. Yes. And so these are the people I surround myself with. Yes. And with that, that allows my vibration to rise. These people support me in whatever I do. And so I don't have anybody tell me I can't do it. I only have people tell me that I can do it. And I don't allow any of the others around. And so fear is basically the unknown. And shame, guilt, sadness, those are all types of fear. Fear has many masks. And the only way we can grow and expand is to step into the fear. Yes. It's like and breathe. I, and breathe and smile so we change yeah. that neurobiology when we step into it. Absolutely. It's yeah, smiling. Oh, what a game changer that is. Just yeah. walking down the street with a little smile on your face and yes. it affects other people. Activates the neural plexuses in the front and the back of our brain. And so it really completely changes us and it changes the vibration that we're putting out into the world. Yeah. yeah. People that are afraid for their health, afraid for their money, afraid for their partner, afraid for their business conditions, um, we need to really step out of that kind of fear. We need to, that's part of what awareness is, becoming more conscious, becoming more present and saying, I can smile at this. I can breathe in the midst of it. And I am going to imagine or image or think and feel this thing into wholeness. I'm going to see it as whole. I'm going to see it as complete. And I'm going to give gratitude for that. And gratitude is the other really great thing. If we can give gratitude for a whole situation and see creation emerging as we do that, and we just let all those other things disintegrate. Disintegrate means they fall out of form, our fears. Absolutely. And worrying about oh, a business, oh, am I going to make it next month or whatever? Does that do any good? All that is is future. Right. Worry about what's happening in the present moment, because this is the only thing that exists. Time doesn't exist. That's right. Only this moment. So create what can be done in the moment. And just let it go because we're again we're back to we're not supposed to be attached to anything but love. Yes. And if we let go of this attachment to finances and uh housing and work and all of this, it's amazing because it doesn't do any good to worry about and have fear around it. It's gonna come. Just ask. All we have right. to do is ask and believe, yeah. and it just naturally happens. It is amazing the synchronicities that happen in our life, like every day, every minute, every hour, you know, because we're holding gratitude and not fear for what will emerge next. And this is an emerging universe, an emerging life, an emerging creation. It isn't all just solid and, you know, unchangeable. Yeah, it's very fluid. It, like for me personally, I've lost everything in my life twice, <clears throat> everything. And it's like been a blessing. Right. I learned that I don't need anything. Yeah. All I need is me. That's right. And it's everything always works out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like one needs to be in the ashes 
and grab that little amber and grab onto it and rise out of it. And once people go through that in their life, everything's fine. Everything's good. That's a very good image. Yeah, it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah, You're exactly. Exactly. Because if you surround yourself with the right people, the ones that support you, like I said earlier, something happens. Well, you got a support group now. They're going to help take care of you. They're going to reach out and say, hey, how can I help? And that's all about community. That's right. A community um, uh, to where we're helping each other, then we don't have to worry because we know we're going to be taken care of. That's right. If you want to contact Gerald, the inner mirror.com is his website. Oh, Gerald, you're awesome. We love you so much. You're really, I mean, there's so much wisdom that flows through you. And I'm so thankful that you have followed your path, you know, that you've, you've chosen to move beyond the old context of living and you dug deeply into yourself for personal freedom and sovereignty and to feel oneness with the universe and to become aware and empowered by your own creative natural blessings and instincts and knowings and sensitivities. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, you're a gift. And look at what you do. Look at this information you're pre presenting to the world. I mean, the world needs you. The world needs this information. Yes. And it's people like you that stepping into your fear, making it happen. Well, I, yeah. You know, I was the person whose knees shook in speech class in high school, you know, and uh, and this is not, I don't know, it's something that I'm driven to do. And yet I really do have, I've had to walk through my fears to do it. And I believe that we're moving into the golden age for humanity and it takes a certain quorum, a certain number of us to be awake to help make that happen. And it's beautiful and it is happening. And I feel, I feel compelled. I feel like this is what I am here for, man. Why would I do anything else? Oh, absolutely. I, mean, I run into people daily that are on the spiritual journey. I mean, more than not on the spiritual journey. And so it's so enlightening that these people are waking up, which is raising the vibration of the earth. So it's going to yes. be changes and it's going to be fascinating. I'm glad to be part of it. I'm glad you're part of it. Yes. And, and uh, every single yeah. person out there who has an inkling to wake up to themselves, to their deeper self, it matters. It makes a difference. Your life will be better and the whole world will be better because of it, because of you tapping into who you truly are and what you love and what brings you joy. Yeah, and for people that have fear around stepping up it's like we don't need validation from anybody that's right nobody do it from your heart space do it for you there's people in the world i mean there's what i forgot how many billions of people in the world there you're going to resonate with someone your message is going to hit somebody so that's don't right. worry about it just do it from your heart space do it from passion do it from love and people are going to come to you they will naturally come and ask for people to come. And they just happen to show yes. up. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. I saw a meme the other day and it said, the amount of time that you spend doing what you don't love is to the amount that your unhappiness will be. Yep. Yeah. So and follow your passion. You never work. Yep. That's right. You're living your joy. Really gifted and uh, really appreciate your presence. Uh, thank you. And keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm so blessed and I enjoy watching you and learning from you and, uh, you know, just such a beautiful journey you're on. Thanks, Gerald. We send you lots of love and big hugs. Adios. Ciao. Adios. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. And these words can take you far I am 
21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside I am 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time